Before you start disassembling a MacBook, you need to make sure that you have the right tools. Uh, the MacBook is actually pretty simple. Uh, it doesn't really require any specific tools. You just need a, a small flat tip screwdriver and a fine tip Phillips screwdriver. Uh, the Phillips screwdriver is what you're going to be doing most of your work with. Uh, just make sure that it fits uh, one of the screws on the bottom and uh, you'll probably be able to do all the rest of the screws. Um, the other thing you're going to want is something to hold all of the little screws you're going to pull out. I usually buy these little things uh, like Walmart or um, your hobby store and um, you're going to need a lot of them because uh, there's going to be quite a few screws uh, that you're going to pull out of the MacBook over the process. And they're all different sizes and you, you, you need to make sure you keep track of where each screw goes otherwise you're, you're not going to get them back in place. Okay, this particular machine we're going to be working with today is a customer's laptop and I'm going to be replacing the backlight inverter. You can see the screen flickering here a little bit and uh, that's what uh, needs to be replaced. I figured the backlight inverter would be a good um, reason to show you a disassembly video because you have to disassemble the MacBook nearly completely in order to get to the backlight inverter. So even if you're just wanting to replace an optical drive or something like that, uh, this video should still work for you. First, turn over the MacBook and take out the battery using a coin or a flat tip screwdriver. Then loosen these three screws in the battery compartment. They don't actually come all of the way out, they stay connected to the bracket. Next, remove the bracket. Next, you're going to remove these three screws. Keep in mind the middle screw is somewhat shorter than the other two. Sometimes you'll need a magnet to pull these out. Okay, next there are three screws in the battery compartment by the memory. However, the two on the left are shorter than the last one on the right. There are two screws to remove on the side with the battery connector, but not the ones actually next to the connector itself. Okay, turn the MacBook around and pay close attention here. You're going to remove this screw, and that one, and this one, and that one. It's easy to get these mixed up. Now, there are four screws on the back of the MacBook. We'll start with these outer screws as they're the same size. Then move to the inner screws as they are identical to each other too. Now turn the MacBook so that you can see the optical drive slot. There are two screws next to it that have to come out. Okay, we're ready to remove the keyboard. First, place your fingers at the top here and pull up. Then, work your way around. You should be able to wiggle everything loose with your fingers. If you can't, you probably missed a screw somewhere. Once it's loose, you'll need to lift up slightly and look for the keyboard cable. You have to unplug it from the motherboard before you can remove the keyboard completely. This one is unusually dirty inside, so I apologize for the dust bunnies you'll be seeing. Now, you can slide the hard drive out. You'll need to remove this aluminum tape from the optical drive. Remove these two screws holding the optical drive in place. Then remove the screw that holds the set of cables in place. Here comes the tricky part. There is a hidden screw under these cables that you'll need to get. Once you get it out, you'll need to unlatch the optical drive by moving this piece of metal. Let me show you what's actually happening here so hopefully that will make sense. Okay. There are three connectors by the optical drive you will need to remove. Then you can deroute the hard drive cable off of the optical drive. Carefully remove the Bluetooth antenna from the optical drive. At this point, you should be able to lift and slide the optical drive out of place. Okay. Now it's time to remove the C channel. Start with the left screw. Okay, these next two screws are the same size. One is actually holding the speaker in place. The other is at the bottom of the C channel. Okay, 
then pull out the channel. You'll probably need to work that little snap at the top with a screwdriver or something. Next, remove the screw that holds the video cable down. You'll need to unplug this little silver cable. I think it's the microphone cable. Pay close attention to the direction you need to pull to unplug this. You'll want to deroute all of the cables that go into the LCD screen on the right side. Next, unplug the backlight power cable. This connector pulls straight up. Do the same for the antenna wires on the wireless card. Pull them straight up. Okay, we're going to start unscrewing the screen. Start with the right brace. There are two screws and they are of different lengths. Now, do the left. There are three screws and they are all different lengths. I recommend saving the middle screw until last. When you're ready to take the last one out, be sure to prop up the LCD with one hand, otherwise it will fall. Okay, the screen is removed. Let's switch gears over to the screen itself. Some people use a credit card, but I use a screwdriver. You'll need to pop the bezel out one snap at a time. In some places, there will be some adhesives you'll have to work with too. The key is to find the snap locations and put the pressure right next to them, otherwise you risk damaging the plastic. I always save the bottom of the screen for last. Okay, we have the bezel off. Now turn it over and take a look at it. If any of these little gray snaps remained attached to the bezel, you'll need to carefully pop them off. Once off, place them back in the metal part. Now, remove these three screws on the bottom. They're all the same size. Then carefully remove this part, making sure not to damage any of the cables. We've arrived at that pesky little backlight inverter. You may now unplug it from both sides and chunk it in the trash. There are a few things to note about reassembly. For the most part, just follow this in reverse. But, be sure to check these little snaps under the keyboard and make sure none of them fell out. If they did, just put them back. Also, for the optical drive, you probably should re-tape that one spot. You can actually get this aluminum tape at the hardware store, but I suppose electrical tape would work. The last thing to mention is that when putting this bracket back in the battery compartment, you'll need to tuck the little foam pieces back down in there before screwing it together.